Hi all, welcome back to Europa Universalis, the Price of Power. This is Ambitious Margrave. So scenario, we're up to part 66 now. Um, okay, so hoping to get a couple of, couple of parts in, although I have started a little bit later than I thought today, but we'll see, so it might just end up being one, but I'd like to get two, because I want to push, push this forward and... Yeah, I think it was getting. I think it's yeah, it's it's gonna get finished sometime soon. But yeah, right. Well, <laughs> well, it, it's heading the right way. Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna go and look at something first. Um, now, I think that was only comment that was made. Yeah, I knew. Oh, oops, <clears throat> dropped my phone. Uh, I knew there was something. Oh dear. Oh, that's all right. Oh, I broke it or something there. Um, no, it's, yeah, part, uh, part 60, yeah, no, I've talked about that, it's just part, it's just part 61, really, um, wait, hang on a second, yeah, right, and it was, um, part 61, and I didn't score yet again for my mission, uh, now, it would have been the last mission I put down the bottom. And I definitely didn't score... Oh, I thought it was three points. So it was alliances and dynasties then, wasn't it? It's only two points. I think it was that one. The one before was marching on, mind you. Could it have been marching on? I kind of thought it was three points. Yeah, because I'll not, I'll not have watched this part back yet. I've only watched part 61, and what is, this is 66, so that one would have been in. And I get the feeling I did score for that one. Right, I'm just going to double check, and if it was marching on, I'm getting three points. What I'm also going to look back for is, now I think I've got these in some kind of order here. Uh, King in Prussia, we've done that one, expand the nation. Well, hang on. Yeah, we've done that one as well. Yeah, in fact, there's only two missions here that, that we've got uh, that are unavailable. I think we've done all of these. Draw electors, expand the nation, king in Prussia. That one, that one. Yeah, we've, we've done quite a lot, actually. So I, I'm going to double check, and I'm going to get the three points for that. What I'm going to do also is look back, because I think it was either the first, second, or maybe third one that I did not score for. Um, I mean... The problem is I can't count up all these points and sort of like try and work out my score because you do get negative points throughout the game, don't you? Well, we just we just received three three points taken away from us because of the marriage thing, didn't we? So yeah, I mean, it, it, but I mean, it's clearly something I'm not really switched on to, um, and it's not that I'm trying to like get myself up to like winning positions here, but I want the I want it to reflect on how. Close, I got to the bots, you know. So, I, I want to, I want to score it properly. You know, I don't want to be missing out on points that, for anybody, it doesn't matter if it was me or not. Um, so yeah, I've got to have a quick look. That's it's quite kind of difficult to find. I mean, I'd like to look back on every mission just to make sure I did check score the points for it. But there's quite a few here, so finding all them in the video. I mean, even finding this one that I don't think I scored for could be tricky in itself. But I'll, I'll pause this now and I'll, I'll come back with what I find. Okay, it definitely was the marching on mission. So I missed the three points there. Um, I'm trying to look back there and I think it was the very first mission that we completed because I set it aside, way to the end. And then as I got going with the missions, I realised that you're better just dealing with them there and then and getting the cards out and putting them away. Um, so I'm pretty sure I didn't score that. Now... Uh, whether there's others that I might not have scored as well, but I'm not going to... To try and look into it and find it, it's going to be really hard. Somebody would... You would need to watch it right from the beginning. I mean, it's a lot of footage to see if I actually scored it. So I do think I missed out on another two points here. So uh, I'm going to give myself five more points here, right? And, okay, maybe that's... Well, the marching home one just happened recently, so... The other one I'd been talking about for a while... And I kept saying I was going to go look back on it, and I just didn't. So, um, that, I suppose it looks a bit more respectable now as well. So, uh, yeah, going to go with that. And uh, 
if somebody does spot the fact that I did score the two points way, way back early on, then they can let me know and I'll be two points shorter. Um, right, three different things to talk about. Um, that Well, that was one of them, but we've got three other things now. Um, well, I'll finish with the last one because this is where the two little influence cubes here are sitting here. So we're still uh, completing Austria's turn here. Um, yeah, it's on the full chart at the area. Yeah, okay. But the other two questions I'd asked, um, I nudged the guys that uh, gave a wee comment to this question yesterday regarding the influence. And it was regarding... When you place an influence, do you consider it solely on alphabetical purposes? Right, I said I was going to get into that one last. Right, I'll come back to that one. So anyway, but when they were answering some of the questions, I, I, I sort of highlighted the fact that these two other questions of mine hadn't been answered. First, the one about the secondary nodes, do the bots benefit? Um, we've got a reply from uh, uh, Tails, it is, Tails, that's the name that's there. Um, but I think I've noticed him answering other stuff on the solo side as well, specifically. So I think he is um, possibly more dedicated to the solo side of things. Uh, his answers were reasonably brief, but um, the one regarding the trade was he felt that I should just be following the solo full chart, the, the full solo bot rules, just, just follow them then. Because I was saying, like, you know, it doesn't... But... My reply to him was, there's nothing about secondary nodes, secondary trade nodes for the bot. And that's why the in the main rules, it talks about no other player will benefit from a secondary trade node. So how do you deal, how do you deal with that? That's, my, that's the whole point of my question. That was the whole question. You know, do, do the bots sneak away without... Do they ignore that rule? I think, even going by what he said, that you just follow the solo rules... Uh, you know, you know the, the problem with that is, I really find the problem with that to be honest because there's so many times in this game that I've looked at the solo rules and had to go and look at the main rules to join them together if you like or coincide with them or blend them together or whatever um, and this has caused quite a few that's probably caused the most trouble throughout the game you know um, and that's why that's because there is separate solo rules you know you have to know the main rules then the solo rules get added on but I think there's some there's certainly some areas within it all that I think need uh, some attention you know regarding all that because um, I mean I, I, I'm certainly not saying that I'm any expert and I can point directly to the bits but there's been many a time when I've you know, seen a, seen a rule and then it's uh, in the solo side and then I've had to go to the main rules and, you know, the answer to this question was given that just follow, follow the solo rules. Well, the solo rules says nothing about a secondary trade node, so I don't know what to do there. I mean, I can't just look at the solo rules because it it's all about trade and that's in the main rules, so I think well, I'm going to stick with the way we've done it and not give the bot the two bot power. Um, makes it easy for me, but I also feel like that's how I see it being right. I have replied. He might he might come back and say more about that, because yeah, it was it was a bit brief and didn't really didn't really leave me with a positive answer that one. Um, not that I'm knocking any replies. I get you know any replies are, are good you know good to have. Um, it still just left me like not sure about what the answer was, really. So I'm going to go with that one, uh, and the other one that he answered as well um, was the bot. Oh, army movement, and his answer to this, well, straight up, he answered it in a one and a two, um, as if there was two questions, and whether whether there maybe was within my question, but he, first the the main part he answered was the. They don't care. They don't care about... And what, I'm, what I mean about they don't care is... The question was... The part, first part of the question was... Do they care about where, where they move around to remove influence as they're moving? Do they care about where they end up regarding the Mac purpose? He just says they don't care. They don't care about that. And admittedly, there is nothing in the rules that says that they should... 
take a path that avoids lifting, uh, removing influence if they can. There's nothing in the rules that say take a path that ends in an area that's going to give them the best Mac. So, you know, you could see the rules maybe being added. You could see them being thought, maybe being thought about, like, uh, when you see things like that, because there was a huge difference. The Mac was four here and it was eight over there or something. Um, you know, but that one was removing an influence, that one wasn't. I mean, maybe the removal of influence isn't as important, but I think ending up in the Mac, you know, uh, could have been far more important because you could end up in an area where, where you get a Mac of only three because it's plus three and then the MC. MC plus three, isn't it? Um, so you could end up in one area that... Like, well, if this, if this town wasn't there, I think that was the area, so you would have had a Mac of three. Remember, these towns weren't there. You would have the Mac of three, and over here you would have the Mac of eight. I mean, that's a huge, huge difference, I think. But anyway, there is nothing written in the rules of that, and that's why I decided to just end it thinking, right, we're just going to go alphabetically. Um, but he, he secondly says, and I think this is me talking about going alphabetically, um, the second point was, it depends if you can uh, defend or a military action. And in Mali, I didn't think about the defend action because the, the, the army will move in a defend action. Um, but I mean, my reply back to that was um, that it was a military action. And to be honest, if you look at the defend rules... They place the army, they look at the mark, they place army, um, they prefer areas with highest tax value that are occupied. You know, the, it look, to me, it looks like the defend action movement is covered. There's not any questions that arise about moving your army. And remember, most of the time, you just pick the army up and, and move it to a location. They can tele teleport, they basically teleport, they move from one, one area they could move about five or six areas away. It doesn't matter. They just move there. Um, whereas the military action, they're actually making some movement area to area. And that's what causes the problems. So there's, I don't think there's an issue with the defend action. It's just the military action and how they move. However, there's nothing in the rules to say that they care about how they move regarding Mac and influence. So I got the reply from that. So that was good enough for me. Uh, so thanks for that, Tails. Anyway, and I'm not I'm not knocking the first reply. Hopefully, you might add something to that because I've basically said back there's nothing. I, I can't see nothing regarding um, the secondary trade nodes. So you know what what do you do then regarding the bot? There's there's no way to go with the bot trade wise. You know I think you have to look at the main rules and the main rules say no other player gains from the secondary trade node, and that's. The, the bot is another player so anyway right and then the third one which caused a bit of um, debate um, yeah there was uh, it's uh, Miraku Mar who um, stood by his ground uh, and I don't know I mean he seems like he's up there with the rules but there's other guys what was the other guy's name Sim was it Sim something um, he was he he disagreed a bit with that and uh, also the other guy that was there sorry I can't remember I should have I should have it beside me that's kind of wrong so uh, uh, was on the side of, like agreed with Miracu at first but then when it when it came up and this is all about um, placing the influence but using the you know does the province area and sea zone selection come into it uh, and if it does come into it it's, the, it's all about when applying an effect that directly benefits the bot, they're the words, directly benefits the bot, so we're and we were trying to place influence for um, Austria last night and we were, uh, well yesterday afternoon or whenever it was uh, and, I, and we were adding two influence in areas where no influence had been placed this turn now, the influence that we did place was placed in Bohemia, I think. No, Switzerland, wasn't it? Well, no, actually, Bohemia and Switzerland. <laughs> I want to say. Yeah, because actually we've, we've finished our turn. Sorry, Switzerland came after that, didn't it? We've, we're just, I'm just rewinding a little bit to see where these two influence go. Yeah, they're either going to go in... Ah, oh, damn. I should have marked the two areas that we were putting them in. Lombardy, because this has got the best, most tax, right? Or alphabetically, uh, Bohemia. No, Bava Bavaria. 
ended up being Bavaria. That was it. That was it. So does it does it directly benefit the bot? If it directly benefits the bot, and there was a bit of debate about that and about what that really means, uh, Miracu's reply was that place and influence always benefits the player. And when when you say player, any any player, but um, the other guy, I want to say it was some something. Uh, he he challenged that by saying that um, he disagreed with that a bit and, and the fact that sometimes you put influence in there and then you go and attack the area and you've got to remove the influence and it's a complete waste. Uh, his, his view on it was that you should just... The, the, he put a bit more thought on it. He says, well, some people like to like consider this, consider that, you know, make decisions for the bot. I don't want to go there. I, you know what I'm like with things like that. I don't want to make decisions for the bot. You know, but I mean, they don't know that he's and I say he's right. I don't want to make decisions for the bot. I just want to know is this considered? I suppose is this considered a direct benefit? Basically, is this considered a direct benefit to the bot? Because if it is, you're going to have to look at highest tax value. If it's not, you're going to look at it alphabetically. He says he would. He 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 thinks it should be alphabetically. Miracu said that you would. He thinks it's directly benefiting the bot, and then um, it should be placed um, in the highest tax value first. Um, so, um, and my view is, I'm going to go with that one. I think and go with the the um, the tax value situation here. Um, I mean, alphabetically seems like it's doing nothing at all, but. I understand that this influence could be placed by the bot and then it might end up to be a... You know, he might end up going... If we put it in here, he might end up going attacking that area next turn. With just the roll of dice, couldn't he? It only comes up Lombardi or... You know, or one of the realms in there. And then once it attacks there, I think you've then got... I think you do have to remove the influence, don't you? Um... Well, I think maybe yeah, you need to take out the whole realm, ah, the whole area. Maybe I, I can't remember how it works, but um, so yeah, it might end up being looking foolish. But alphabetically, there's n- none of these areas. I mean, because they're alphabetically historically correct. So I mean, there's not they're not set in a way that alphabetically places things in an area that might benefit things. It's just alphabet. It's just random, isn't it? It's like rolling a d six, really. And picking the six areas that are relevant or something like that. It's really like that. Whereas at least tax, uh, highest tax income has some kind of meaning, some reason, I think, you know. So I'm going to go with that one. But um, yeah, I can understand, yeah, the, the whole... It, it, it could be... I, I, my feeling is that I kind of agree that it is a benefit, and uh, that was the intention of the rule, the way it's worded, I think. You know, I, I, directly benefit, like the, the other guy says, you know, you would think directly benefit, what's the big, what's the direct benefit to this game would be gaining prestige, and he, he made the comment of that, and there's none of that happening, so, you know, I mean, doing what we've done now, how does, how does that directly benefit the boat? It's a fair, it's a fair point. It's a fair argument, but there was there was nobody stepped in and felt and I felt like um, it was a hundred percent clear. I, although I do feel like Miracu was standing his ground and feeling like this this was a benefit by putting influence in an area. It is a benefit. So that that's the bit that, that I kind of felt like. Well, let's just go with that. But you can see an argument either way for it. So these are maybe some things that need to be addressed and uh, dealt with in the rules. Um, I mean, uh, that, that, bit, that province area and C-zone selection, I'm sure that could be could be improved, you know? I'm sure that could be improved. Um, and some of the things, like we've just talked about moving the army, you know, that, that's done through the same province area and C-zone selection like we just talked about. And it would be done. Now, that... that Moving it, moving the army into an area to go heading somewhere, doesn't uh, directly benefit the ball by moving it into there. But then again, you could say, well, if it moves into there, or it moves into there, if it moves into there, it's removing an influence, so that's hurting the ball. 
if it moves into there, that's not hurting the boat. So you could argue that and say that it shouldn't then go through the area that's got its influence. So, uh, yeah, I think that I think that section could be there could be a bit more put into that to make make things better for uh, how you how you make these decisions for the boat. Okay, right, that's everything. Um, 20 minutes, okay. So, and that was Austria done its turn. Yeah, because it done that... Well, hang on, what, what did it do first? It done the diplomacy action. Yeah, I want to say it put the two influence in here first. Because that's where it had the alliance. And then it came down and put the two influence in here. And that's the one we weren't sure about. And then it carried on and diplomatically done a different target because it still had six bot piece left and it was at peace. That is at peace, isn't it? Yeah, nobody's at war. And uh, then it targeted Switzerland and put another two cubes in there. Uh, but, um, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Go to diplomat. Any free space in targets area? Yeah, it has less... Yeah, spend two to add two in an area of target realm, and, and then end its turn. So that's the last, the last part done. So I actually, it plays six six points of influence there. So. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the pies. Anyway, um, for everything, it's good that, and it's good that I also go. I maybe had to nudge to get uh, answers to the other questions. Uh, but at least we've got something back now. At least we've got some some kind of thing to go on. Okay. So over to France, who haven't. Yeah, we must be near the start here, aren't we? I was going to say because France haven't done. In fact, is this just was this just the start of the turn? I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long drawn out part, and we only got that one action done. Yeah. Okay. So it is France to go, um, and they're just going to draw a card, Grant, aren't they? Their army is in the map. They can't siege though. There's not. They're not under attack yet. They're going to draw a card. They've got full amount of bot power. Loads of bot power actually. How did they go? Must have gained some. Did they gain some extra for somewhere? Oh, did they move that along a bit? Now I'm moving it back. Uh, right, okay, so. Oh, military, right. Hmm. Uh, right, so they're going to spend two of that loads of bot power. I don't know, they seem to have, Oh, yeah, they, all ca they both carried over quite a lot from the last turn, didn't they? I think that was it. That was the case. Right, so two bot power. No card discarded there. Military action. So we've got it right here. But I'll just go over it and we'll look as we're going. So are they at war? No, they are not. Do they have a claim? Uh, yes. I have claim number six. Now there is, well, the other area is England in there. So that could be interesting. If they do actually roll, well, they're going to have to roll. So have they got a claim? Yes. That's only claim. This is a core. So we're we'll gonna roll a dice and see if it matches, but they do need to roll a six here, so not impossible. It's the other way about it. A one. Uh right, so does it match um on a non-colonial claim? No, it doesn't. There's no power struggles, no marriages with our other side up. Uh no. Well the the board doesn't have any. Well, no, we, we don't either. We had done one through you. So no, go to military chart chart. Roll for target if it's an NPR place a uh, claim. Okay, so France military chart. <clears throat> France bought military chart. Here we go. So let's roll, get it started. Five, bit of a clunky one, but that's fine. It comes out the cup and that's what it does. Right, so a five there, so a realm in Brittany and Normandy. Uh, right, well, we've already got a claim in there. Um, so... I think that's just a mess then, isn't it? I think we just move on from there. I think... I mean, it is, well, it's not a valid target for a claim, though, Grant, is it? Go to the military target chart. Roll for target. If an NPR plays a claim. The other thing is it could target an opponent, but it can't. 
target a realm in Brittany and Normandy because there's a claim already in there. Yeah, well, I'm going to roll one, I think. Right, so let's roll from Brittany and Normandy. A two. Um, so we were here. A two is a realm in Languedoc. Uh, well, they own all the realms in Languedoc. So we're rolling on. Let's go real roll off camera now. Roll the three from Realm and Languedoc. Uh, Genoa. Uh, where's Genoa? There's a trade point. Where's the actual? Uh, where the heck is that? Hang on. Okay, I did. I did look at Genova, and then I thought, "Is that?" Because there's the trade node there, Genova, and there's Genova. I mean, okay, I don't know. I guess you're meant to just know these things. I mean, that's on the targeting chart, and it's spelled G E N O A. Okay, there's just a V in between, Grant. I mean, are you, are you being... Am I being picky? I don't know. So I eventually looked up just to double-check that one, and you can see it's flagged there, and it is... Um, where is it? I had it a minute ago. See, these are so tricky. You lose them so easily. There, there. Do you know what? Lombardy. So it's in... Lombardy area, which is what that is, and that's it there, it's clearly, and that's the flag. You can see it's got a tax of four there, so um, so that's one, two, and then we've got across here in Corsica, three, so where's number four? Um, indeed, where is number four? I don't know. Well, I don't know where it is. <laughs> that's a two, that's a one, three. It's meant to have a, a tax income of four. So there must be another small province somewhere. But, I mean, I've looked underneath some of these because, I mean, some of these... Well, I suppose they might have been taken. Um, these are all Austrian, though, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I know there are some that jump quite a bit. I mean, even... Well, no, not really. So, I suppose... I mean, I did look around here, though. It's not there. It's not there. It's not, you know, it's not in France. Uh. And you was a different one, yeah. That's French, though. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Okay, well, it's a target, though, isn't it? It is a target. So, can... Yeah. Um, France can put a claim in there. Basically, it's what we want. It's a... So hang on, hang on. They, they actually targeted... I've got claim number three. So they actually targeted Genoa, though. Um, so for the purposes of us carrying on, that was the realm target. It wasn't an area or a realm within an area or anything like that. It was specifically that target. So as we move on here... Um, well, the other, thing, the other thing is, what is the biggest tax value? This is going to be four. Well, this one's got more as well, though, isn't it? Oh, so that one's got four as well, whatever that is. One, two, three, four. So, but it did, it did specifically target that. So let's come back to what's next. Go to military target chart. Roll for a target. If an NPR place a claim, yeah, okay. Target is an opponent. No. Target is eligible. Yes, I think so. 
and Bolt has less than four influence in target's area if it is an NPR. Yes. They have no influence in the area, just Austria. So yes, target strength is greater than or equal to two times bot strength. And uh, bot strength is calculated on deployed and available. So that, that's going to be a no. Their tax income is four, so it is not two times whatever that is. So, so, target strength. so no, so they are going to declare war. They're going to spend one bot per to recruit nine units. So, now this, this specifically is a declaration of war on Genoa. And what Martin had to remind me of, that when we come back after dealing with all this war and we go into the next turn, this claim might still be in, well, probably will still be in this area. And then it can target another realm but it'll be based on highest tax value and i think it, it'll tell us here yeah when you roll does it, uh, do you have a claim yes select the realm for which it is valid and then you prefer opponent then highest npr strength and that's when that comes in there but at the moment we don't look at that just now we're just looking at genoa so we declare war on genoa and I think we're going to have to find where this other one is because it could be relevant to their... Because this is a time where um, the NPR, the strength in there is 2, but this is adjacent, so that adds another 1. I'm going to have to say it's 4, but I, didn't, I don't know where the other one is. Because it needs to be adjacent to this area. Have you looked at them all, Grant? I mean, these are these are big ones, but Avignon, Montpellier, Toulouse, and they're French. Well, there's maybe nothing else. Maybe their strength is only going to be three then, unless I'm missing the obvious. These were yeah, these have been done. That's uh, Bavaria, is it? Bavaria. That's Austria. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the other one's hiding. I could give them benefit of doubt and say they've got four, but it needs to be in an, an adjacent area though, and there's definitely not any of them there. Unless I'm completely blind and missing it. Maybe go and look. Maybe somebody else has asked a question. Oh no! Hang on! Hang on! There's a. There's a file there that you can go and search for things. I forgot about that. Hang on. I had to laugh at that one. The guy asks on BTG, um, where's the other province for um, uh, Genoa? I can only find three. And uh, uh, Sorry, I can only find the three strength uh, being in the last Genova and Corsica. And, uh, hang on. Right, sorry, I got caught away there. Anyway, the guy asks a question and then he says, I can only find... Genova and Corsica, and then he re and then he replies to his own comment. Found it. <laughs> I was like, right, found it. Well, where is it? Tell us. No, it just said found it. I was like, great. And uh, somebody else, however, commented saying that they didn't tell me exactly where it was, but told me that they only found it because when the Turks took Crimea. So it's away on another map. Away over here somewhere. Um, so what that's all about, uh, there we go. So it is four strength, however, that's not going to count for their defence because they need to be adjacent, don't they? So their strength, army, their NPR army strength will only be three, as far as I'm aware. Okay, so where were we? Target's elbow, declare war, <coughs> and then go and spend the bot power. And they're going to recruit nine units. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, there's only going to be one of them left. Right, so their army is what? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Ah, uh, right. So the declared war. Does the bot have an NPR? Bot has NPR allies with two plus adjacent to the target. And uh, no. Again, like I say, I'm not, not sure if we set, set France up 
properly or not, where alliances or not. Uh, it, it still felt like it was a bit unclear to me, but anyway, there's no no alliances. Um, target me targets me saying defense. No, is that is that in the? No, it's not. Oh no! Yes, it is, Grant. Okay, the emperor's involved, and now, hmm, maybe not. Cause this now, where was was that in that area? Or was that in, that's in that area? It is. No, because that means it's not in the HRE. Ah, well, surely that's clear what that means. <laughs> not not in the HRE. That's what that counter means, doesn't it? Uh, where's the bit that shows us the count? Oh, it's at the end of the book. Not at the beginning, Grant. Isn't that? Is that the end? Yes. Um, I think it's just no, not HRE. Yeah. Uh, I not nothing the index helped me with that well surely it just clearly means that they're not in the HRE and the, defen and the, the bot's not going to come at their defence because they've also got um, ooh, Central Italy down there well Grant sure that's going to be on that side of it because this was outside the HRE anyway this part. yeah Got that one, that one, and that was through an event, wasn't it? Lombardy in central uh, Italy. But I think there's another one being placed. Yeah, up, uh, up there. Ah, oh, that was through the event as well. That the Dutch left the HRE, didn't they? And uh, I want to feel like this covers the whole of this, but I might be wrong. No, I have put it up in the Netherlands area. So maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's just the Netherlands part. Right. Well, I don't think the Austria is going to be involved here. What's this kind of a pity rule, isn't it? We kind of want, maybe want Austria and France to go for each other and then we could maybe have had a go at Austria, maybe. Okay, well, no, there's no, they can't call for any aid then. Um, right, hang on. Okay, yeah, just, just another thing there. I just thought I'd have a look at this. Page 45, 18 points, that's leaving and rejoining the HRE. If all the HRE provinces in an HRE area are owned by external realms, which means has its capital located outside the HRE and is not emperor. Oh, mind you, we, our capital is in the HRE. I'm talking about Brandenburg here, but... Right, okay. That area will automatically leave the HRE. So I, th I thought we maybe had to put counters on... Well, mind you, he's got one in that area, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so that's not relevant. Oh, if an area leaves HRE, the Emperor loses one Imperial influence, Imperial authority. Ah, oh, loss, of, loss of this authority for areas that leave as a direct consequence of an event is accounted for in the event effects. Right, okay. So, yeah, I would have been taken care of because every one of these not HRE were done through event. But you can see that if... Well, it doesn't matter. It's not for us. If France were to take an area in the HRE, then it would become non-HRE and then they would lose an imperial authority. An area that's left the HRE will immediately be reincorporated in the HRE if all the provinces in this area are that are located... On the inside, the printed HRE board are once again owned or vassalized by HRE members or by the Emperor. When it is reincorporated, the HRE, the Emperor gains one Imperial authority. Right, yeah, so, and th th this doesn't help them. That They can't get uh, come to their aid. Okay. So, where are we now? Remove all bots influence from all of the target's areas. Well, it didn't have any influence there. And yeah, and see, this is the bit that, let's just say this was Austria right now, and we had put this influence in for them, and that was the guy's argument that, like, you know, they could just as easily now come and declare war in here, and they've got to now remove all that influence. So, 
and how do you know how the bot's going to decide that? But you've got to have some kind of rules. Um, it, to be honest, all what needs to be decided there is is place and influence a direct benefit. If 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 it's a yes, you know, if it's a yes or a no, it depends on how you do it. That's that's all we need the answer to really. I suppose these answers really need to come from the people with authority, like the designer themselves, really. Yeah. Um, so remove all bots, influence from the areas. Declaration war triggers naval battles and oh uh yeah, no it will grant. Well now this one no, it's not gonna be relevant, is it? Because again Well that's a that's a large port though, that's got a two and a one. So does that not mean they get three ships this time? So that it's possible. So yes. Well, let's go to naval battle then. Right, so naval battle. Any enemy is a player realm. No. Roll battle dice. Artillery dice equals number of hostile ships. Ah, oh, it depends on the ports that they've got. Doesn't it? Yeah, so the number of hostile ships is going to be three. Because that's a large port. So that gives two and um and this one's a small port. So that would give three. However, well, we need to roll uh, greater than or equal to two plus adjacent bot ports. However, that's a large port. That's a small port. So, I mean, is that not going to be one, two, three? I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Even if this was, for some reason, just counted as one port. I get the feeling that if I look more into that, I would find this would be a, two, a three. If it was just one, that's one, two, plus the two, so that's four. So, they've got three ships and they've got to roll a four. So, it's not hard, is it? So, there's no point rolling that one. Um... Yeah, so the result would be a no there. The resolving bot receives one uh, bot power of first battle, won this turn. Yeah, so again, there's no real point rolling that dice. I don't believe. He gains a bot power for the first battle this turn. And then we move back to see if a land battle occurs. So, Declaration of War triggers land battles? No. Army size is greater than or equal to two times target strength? Yes. Um, now the, yeah, to me the target's three, even though he's got a one <laughs> province away over another map, then it needs to be adjacent, it still does need to be adjacent, yeah, to join in, so it's three, so yeah, that's a yes, army's on the map board, oh yeah, it is, uh, yes, check for Mac, well where it is is fine, because uh, that's its capital there. So it's fine. So it's unlimited map. Can it siege in current area? I see. I think it's just double checking there. Because it wouldn't want to move away from there if it could siege. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how you would get... I think you would... Well, there must be a way. There must be a reason that is in there. So can siege in current area? No. Hostile unit or area one or two spaces away? No. It's three spaces away. Also remember, this is surrounded by mountains as well. So that might be relevant. Um, but it has three spaces. So that's a no. Can place a ship that would help. There's not place a ship this turn. Uh, uh, no. I'm just looking here because he is on the coast and we've got a ship there, we've got a ship but I mean it, it would have to be coming right the way around wouldn't it, to come in here uh, yeah no no it doesn't work, doesn't work so no move army up to four spaces to non hostile area closest to enemy right well this is the same and the question I asked earlier we are and was told that it doesn't care about influence, about Mac. It just 
well, in my view, because it's a military action, it just does it alphabetically. Um, so it wants the end adjacent to here, which it can be here or here. Um, can it be here? We'll see why it couldn't be. Uh, I think the most straight... Well, no, you should look alphabetically, so... Well, but then would it take a roundabout route if it was going alphabetically? Are you being a bit fussy here, Grant, and can't you just move it to Burgundy and be done? Or Languedoc, if you feel the need. Well, it's in this area. Where would it go alphabetically? This is Aquitaine, so it would go in there. That's an A. So that's one. Right, and then there's no influence to lift up there because it's all its own areas. And then between there, Languedoc or Wa. Languedoc is the next... Well, now Languedoc is the next step that's taken adjacent, so it's then going to go in there, isn't it? I think maybe I'm making more of that than it needs to, but... Well, I don't don't know, though. I mean, I did, I did prove the point that Mac did matter that last time, so... I mean, not that we're checking Mac again now, but, but that's all it's going to do. It's going to end its turn now, isn't it? And then next turn, it's going to check Mac. So it, it's fine where it is, but if it was in a different area, it might be a different story. Okay. So it's moved up to four spaces to non-hostile area closest to enemy. Yeah, so I mean, that actually could have been in Switzerland as well. And um, But that's fine. And then it's going to end the turn. It would gain one if it won a... Right, it's, it's already gained the one. Right, okay. Right, finally, it's our turn. I have no idea what we're going to do. <laughs> I know we were talking about going and getting a subjugate card again. E4, there is one still there. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. We were also talking about doing this... Uh, mission, weren't we? But to do it, we need to do the... Is there any, any other possible way we can get more uh, administrative power without using the... I don't think so, Grant. The thing is, whatever you do to, to be able to get that power, you're gonna, it's probably going to spend a turn to do it anyway. Any events that might do that, maybe? I've not really studied the events, to be honest. Um No, I'm not I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me there. Um should we should we just go with this? Have at least plus two while well, also having researched four IDRs. And then we're going to gain gain two back and appoint an advisor for free from the top five cards on any discard pile. And right at the moment, this guy is sitting as he... Well, I think he's five down, isn't he? One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's sitting the fifth card down. Uh, the plus three guy. I mean, the, the thing is, there's two plus two guys I could get if... Right, hang on, what is he? He's a plus. What are we getting? What's getting hit? Triangles, right. So that's fine as well. Right, well, I mean, it seems... Yeah, and then you were going to grab the subjugate card as well. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So I'm going to change the actual focus. Why not? Change the actual focus. I'm going to... Do I need five? Normally I'd need six there. Yeah, but the idea the idea reduces it by one. Yeah, so I do need five, don't I? But I'm getting two back. So I'm going to change the actual focus. I'm going to shift two cubes, one from diplomatic, one from military. And then I'm also going to discard. What am I going to discard again? Right, I want the development. Yeah, I want that general... Yeah, tactical retreat. I think it was... No, hold on. 
I'm discarding this for sure. I don't think I've got a need for that. The other one, was the other one the Royal Marriage? I think it was. This, that's kind of... But then we're, we're talking about subjugating... Where are we talking about subjugating? Was it Wikipolska? No, we have no cubes in there. Don't we need... Oh, I don't know. I think I needed... You know, you need an alliance in there, Grant. Is it not just that you need? Or do you need cubes as well? Yeah, you've got to discard cubes from the area. Equal to target's base tax. Well, I must have been thinking about using it somewhere else then. I mean, I've got Lorraine down there. Was I thinking about that, maybe? Okay, let, let's do it and we can work on it later. So I'm going to discard these two cards. Um, and then I'm going to grab that subjugate card back. That was the fourth card down before I discarded. So, and that goes back, that goes in my hand. That cost me one diplomatic power. And uh, I want to say it might cost me ducats as well. Uh, I can't remember though. Yeah, it does indeed. It cost me two ducats as well, so I'll pay for, put the two ducats back. I've still got ten ducats. So. Right, so that was that. I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm not really sure about the subjugate card. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on it. But I've got it now. And, uh, well, that's my turnover. So, yeah, we're still hoping that Austria and uh, France do not discard a uh, administrative card so uh, right, who's next Austria what are we at 51 minutes I think I might just stop this part I'm feeling weary already so I'm not well if I stop now I should start another part well in fact I'm, all I'm going to do is stop and restart this so it'll get me started another part anyway uh, actually, maybe I won't do it that way. Maybe I'll copy it across first. Yeah, so again, another part that we didn't really do an awful lot there, did we? Right, well, so be it. Right, I'll be back soon with the next part. Okay, cheers.